Hello, and a huge welcome back to the Content Podcast. Today is, of course, the second part of Release, Where Do I Go From Here?, in which two individuals who have both in the past experienced going through being released, sharing their stories to raise awareness on what can be a more than difficult process in a player's life. And I'm glad to say the Content Podcast is joined by Bolton Wanderers defender, Mr. Jack Hickman. Jack, it's a pleasure to have you on. First and foremost, how have you been during what feels like the never-ending pandemic? The pleasure to do it, bro. Um, I've been okay, thanks. Been all right. Just obviously having football there still has helped with it because it's been obviously a difficult time for everybody and stuff. So having that still there has, has like kind of made my life have that part of the normality back which obviously a lot of people are missing out on. So obviously I'm grateful for that. But it's obviously not, it's not ideal. Like everyone obviously wants the freedom and stuff of life. So it's not been great, but I'm, I'm, I'm here, man. I'm sticking in. How's it been for you? Yeah, I mean, it's the same, to be honest. I think, you know, obviously for your side, it's a bit different because obviously you're playing the football. But from just a fan, I mean, I spoke about it with a few of my friends and, you know, just the fact that the football's on, it's given a structure to our lives. Like, it might sound silly to some people, but, you know, just doing whatever you need to do in your day and then bang, coming home, having your dinner and then just putting on the football. Like, it just gives you that little bit of structure. But, um, so, speaking about all the football, let's get into it then. What made you not only play football, but what drove you into making it more of a career rather than a hobby? Um, I say I just kind of, like, fell into it at a really young age. Like, my... um. My dad was like a coach at the local club and stuff for the academies, for like the uh, local academy we had there. My brother used, is like eight years older than me. He played football. So literally at the age of four and five, I was probably kicking a football around every day. And then when I was five, I went into it early. So I was playing like under sevens at my local club, but like a year early, if you know what I, was, know what I mean. So my uncle used to run that team and my cousin played for it. So I literally was just playing like a year up and then I played that whole year. Then I dropped down, done another season at under sevens with with them as well. So then I think like by like the end of under eights probably helped me that I had that extra year that I was probably like looking really good. So then I went um went to West Brom at under like the end of the under eight season and literally signed for West Brom under nines and just went from there, really. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's it's quite fascinating, isn't it, to just look back. It, I must feel like so many years ago now. But, um, yeah, so obviously, crazy. you know, move, moving on, you've spent, obviously, a, a lot of your life at Coventry City. What made you, you know, make that transition and how did that all come about initially? Um, obviously, yeah, well, I was at West Brom from, like, 8 to 16, it was great there to be fair. Obviously, it was local to me, it was my local club and stuff. And then, obviously, at the end of under 16, you get decided whether you're going to get a scholarship and stuff at the club. And I didn't get one at West Brom. And to be fair, that time in my life, I was obviously that's that time at 16 where like you go to college, you go to sixth form, you do like your little apprenticeships and stuff. So it was one of them for me because I always just, all I knew was West Brom for like eight years. So I was just like, it probably hit me hard. I didn't probably realise it at the time because I was so young, but looking back on it, it probably did hit me really hard. And then I was, remember just with my mum and dad, like applying for colleges like you would and like everyone would and applying for this and that because you have to do something. And I wasn't sure what I was going to do, to be honest, because I weren't really like, uh, the, the best at school academically um, and didn't really try too much just because all I was bothered about was football. So I went like, I remember I just kind of just gave it a rest for like a month. Like I didn't really want to train, didn't really want to go into anywhere. And then I had like phone calls from like, like loads of like clubs to go in there and trial and stuff like that. But then obviously I had... Obviously, you know, Dagri, who obviously I was at West Brom with and I went to the same school and that. Obviously, he's from Cov and I think he was going to Cov. And there's another lad called Renee who went um, 
was going to Cov with him training and stuff. So Dagby was like, why don't you just come and, and train at Cov? And, and Cov had been in touch. So I was like, oh, I might as well just go and train there and just see what it's about and that. And then, yeah, I just went there from there and uh, ended up uh, signing a scholarship at Coventry. Yeah, I mean, just looking back at it, like I said, it must feel like a long time ago now. But, yeah, um, it does, man. you know, mad. obviously, we'll get on to it eventually, you know, and I think maybe you being released from Coventry is probably a little bit more known than you being released from West Brom, of course. But, mm. you know, to just, we'll get to that, of course. But just to go through it at a young age as well, and, you know, as you said, at the time, maybe you didn't actually have the time to digest what was going on. But looking back at it, I mean, the thing that I've realised is it can be so tough. As you said, you know, you, you grow up just knowing football. That's your trade, essentially. And for you to then sort of, you know, be left out on your own, and you mentioned taking a little bit of time out, do you think that's essential, really, just to take that little bit of time, just to sort of gather your thoughts and think, right, where do I need to go if it's going to be football, if it's going to be elsewhere in terms of a job? Yeah, 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 I do, because I think... I remember even like slightly even just talking about like going to college or doing like a trade or something like that and that even just scared me so stuff like that and thinking about that at the time me obviously not realizing it because I was young but looking back it probably did give me a kick up the ass and think like well not just think like are oh, you only good at this so you need to do this but like this is what you want your life to be so you need to like you've had your little kind of relaxation time and that now like you're 16 years of age you need to you need to grasp it and, and you need to go and go and do something so I think it was more that than anything else like I didn't want to go and do something that I didn't like I've always been that kind of that way to be fair like if I don't like something I'm not going to do it I'm strong-minded so I always just say what I think if you know what I mean so yeah, yeah, it is yeah de definitely. I mean, um, you know, just, you know, what you were saying there about I just won't be able to do it if I didn't like it, you know, and obviously I, I went to university myself and I did a journalism course, a sports journalism course. And, you know, traditionally, a lot of people go to universities because I want to get this job because it pays me this much. But for me, it was just the fact that I love doing this kind of stuff. And I just like you like yourself. I just couldn't imagine doing something just because of the money or just because I have to do it. I needed that passion sort of thing. Um, and obviously that's what's brought you into football. I mean, just that pure passion and stuff. So, I mean, you're still very young, of course, but what would you look back at at the moment as your best memory in football so far? Obviously the most recent would have been making my football league debut, which for me, it's like, well, for anybody, it's a massive deal. You know what I mean? You play, you hold, you go through so much as a young kid and go to all these training sessions and stuff and realistically it is to obviously get to that moment so it was it was weird obviously not like having fans and stuff there but like I obviously just sat down with myself the day after and was like that you have to kind of be proud of that because it takes a lot to get there so that was probably one of them and then like going back to Cov and stuff probably say like the youth cup game against arsenal like time ago uh, i was like a first year scholar i think i was like 16 17 but that night was just as like a 16 year old kid that night was so big because like there was a, about three four thousand fans at the rico and stuff like i'd never really played in front of that much before because against arsenal it had like sort of like there. media bridge and stuff where's you that i was I was also one of the fans that were there. Yeah, I went with a couple yeah. of friends of mine. It was great. Was and um, Reese uh, Ford, uh, obviously, in the episode before, he's mentioned as well. You probably won't, well, you obviously won't know, but he also said that was the moment for him that he looks back at as just an experience that he couldn't, he couldn't really describe. You know, it, it was it, for me as well in the audience, in the crowd, it, it was a great night. And to yeah, be a no. part of that. 100%, bro. As like a young kid that age just to be like involved in that and obviously playing and then I scored as well. It's just kind of like moments that you'll never forget. Like however old you get, like I'll probably be 60 and still, and still remember that, you know what I mean? And the lads that I was at Cov with, like done my scholarship with, we were all like class as well, like that changing room, 
that we was in and like the, all the love that we had for each other. It was special to share that with them. And we'll always like, I still speak to a lot of them lads and like we'll always like remember that. So it is good to be fair. So of course, the purpose of today's episode is not only to get you a to get to know you a bit more but also to shed light on the process of being released and what it can really be like i mean you being released from coventry city as we've said was let's put it this way well documented in the media so in your own words could you explain what happened um i mean yeah like you said it was well documented in the media it was obviously i'd say probably it was blown off <laughs> a little bit more than it should have been and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, I've only got myself to blame for that situation because it was me that that put myself in the situation. And yeah, I was I was young and a lot less wiser than I am now, but I can only look back and blame myself really. But although I say that, it was probably the best thing that did happen to me in a sense. And I'm really glad it did because it did make me way like wake up and and kind of like smell the coffee what people would say just life decisions that I would make and and stuff like that but it happened I mean it obviously wasn't great and all of the stuff that come with it after wasn't great so but it happened and it was the wrong thing to do I think I knew that I think people was was a bit confused that I thought like oh, it was all right to do that or that was me or that's what I was but obviously as soon as I kind of seen it people like I'm guessing thousands of people probably seen it before I seen it put it that way so when I seen it I was obviously would have had the same reaction as everyone else you know what I mean like what is this like that is it is shocking which it was like I'm guessing like people would laugh at it as well, like a few bits. But obviously the bit where I talk about the club and stuff is is not good at all. And it should never have been done really. And it, that's not obviously my true re- true reflection on them as well. So obviously it's just a bit of a weird one for me because I'm guessing they'll always have like well, not many of them will like have sour taste in their mouth I suppose but I always remember by them for that which is a shame but because at the end of the day I was a I was an under 23s player like I was learning my trade I was I've done nothing at club I've still done nothing now but it was just a shame at the time really that it all went down the way it did if you know what I mean yeah of course I understand and I mean you know I know you obviously beyond football and outside any of this media kind of work and you know, it's a lot easier for someone like me to understand it wasn't as bad, as hard as it might sound to understand. Yeah, yeah, it that's wasn't my point. As bad as what it may have seemed to someone who just only knows you from a professional that's what point I mean, of view. And, you know, um, of course, as we've both said, you know, you know you did wrong. There's no going around it. Um, but what were the lessons that you learned exactly from going through that? I remember, I recall you just saying there, you know, that it was probably the best thing to happen to you and to get your mind into you know taking effectively the al and turning it into a lesson instead of a loss i think that says a lot about your character so what are the specific lessons that you did learn going from going through something like that sorry um i'd say obviously i've become a lot more mentally stronger and took the lessons from that into my further life which have ultimately helped me a lot um Obviously, you learn to be more resilient. I don't know. Like, it's a difficult one, really, because it's such a... To be fair, like, it's such a unique situation, what happened, you know what I mean? Like, not many people are going to have go through the same kind of things that I did, but there will be similarities when people are struggling. Um, I don't know. I don't think anything could have kind of, like, prepared me for that um, at the stage I was at in my career. Like, at the end of the day, I was... a uh, like I said, I was a 23s player at Cov. Like I'd made my debut in the cup and stuff, but like I had no like media following. Like might have a fan or something say like, "Oh, you had a good game in the 23s here and there." Like I would never have took stick if you know what I'm trying to say. Like no one would have ever said like, "Oh, you're this, you're that." Like you wasn't good today, so I wasn't obviously prepared for tens of thousands of people giving me 
stick online, if you know what I mean. Um, and I struggled, bro, like 100% I struggled, especially like the first couple of months. I didn't know how to get away from it, bro. I just felt like it was following me everywhere. And I don't know, bro, like it's, it's difficult to kind of explain, but it's molded me <laughs> into the person I am now, yeah. which is like probably a good thing to say where I was struggling for months on months, but the way that I felt then, I just don't feel like I could ever be that low again, if you know what I mean. It's sort of the Personally. idea of like, a, of like a pain barrier, isn't it? You've gone through so much yeah, and you sort of think, well, I can take what's No, nah, and I do use that. Come. I do use that in my life now as well. Like sometimes when I'm thinking that I'm not feeling good or that I'm not, I'm not really all there today or something, I do generally think back to them times like how I was feeling then and how like mentally drained I was and how like I was waking up every morning and going to sleep every night you get me so I kind of like now sometimes when I'm not feeling too good do you go back to that and think yeah look how good I feel now compared to that like you know what I mean if it's okay with you what were the type of stuff that you were going through what were your thoughts and your emotions throughout the whole process obviously once you realize that okay I'm in a bit of trouble here. Um, uh, I was, to be fair, for like the first couple of weeks, like I was in a bad way, like just because I was still receiving so much heat from it all, you know what I mean? Like I couldn't kind of get away from it. Like I was deleting all my social media and stuff, but then someone would say something and, and it was just difficult to get away from, bro. Like it went so far that like I was, go I'll go shopping or something like that and people will say something or you see people looking at you and you think like what's going on here so it's just like I couldn't kind of get away from it and I struggled to deal with it I just kind of locked myself in my room to be fair for a few weeks and cried probably numerous of times and and just thought like everything that I've like kind of worked so hard for has just just gone then as time went on, I kind of, because I was still struggling with it, to be fair, probably like six months on from the actual incident. Just not because of like the stick and that, I kind of got used to all of that and it didn't bother me at a certain point, probably like four or five months into it. But for like the second, third, fourth month, I was, I was probably got good at putting like a little mask on, bro, to be honest, and like going out and, and going to to play football and just like hiding the fact that I wasn't good at all. And that was probably the wrong thing to do. And, but everyone deals with it in the wrong way, I suppose. But I wasn't, wasn't doing well at the time, bro, to be fair. But I, like I said, I just had that mask up where I just like, I can't let people see me be like this, if you know what I mean. But it is okay to be like that. And everyone goes through stuff like that at certain points. You know what I mean? So that's what I'm saying about people who, who listen to this and different things. Obviously, my situation was really unique and and like it might not happen the same to everyone else or other young footballers or stuff like that, but there'll be chunks and, and similar ways that you felt and everyone does it in their own way at the end of the day, but you just need to know that there's there's people that go through the same stuff as you, like you're not alone, if you know what I mean. Yeah, definitely. So, um, that, well, first of all, thanks a lot for sharing that with us. I mean, it will certainly help a lot of people understand not just sort of the process of being released, but also, you know, the idea of how powerful people's words can be and how much it can take a mm. toll on someone. And, you know, that's not me condoning what you did. That's not me, you know, nah, I'm, but I'm, I'm, I'm just sort of saying, you know, that the fact that People will just write things, people will send it, people will even say it to you potentially and not really realise the consequences. But I mean, for you to talk about it now, it, it definitely does shed, shed some light on what really is a bit of a, a taboo topic. It's not really something that people talk about or mention. And, you know, people just sort of forget about it, but then you don't forget about it. Yeah, that is, that is the thing, bro. And you're 100% right, man. Like, people don't understand... The, like their words can be powerful like as much as it don't mean nothing to them it could mean so much like that 
there could be 5,000 messages that will be sent to some person, but your message could be the one that will ultimately, I don't know, things happen, you know what I mean? You've seen a lot of people like commit suicide and stuff from from obviously social media and stuff like that. So I just think that anyone listening to this that has done that in the past or still might be doing it, just generally just think about what you're saying because the person that, like say what the topic that you're commenting on, that person is already going to know what you're telling them. If you know what I'm trying to say, like all the stuff that I was getting and everyone calling me every name under the sun, it wasn't anything that I didn't call myself. You know what I mean? Like, and I didn't think, but that situation, I used to be like it to be honest. So anyone that is listening and thinks, oh, well, he's got an opinion, you know what I mean? I used to have an opinion on everything before that happened to me. Like, I would see something online, the internet, and think, you know what I mean? Like, I have an opinion on it straight away. Like, I look at my phone and think, oh, this and this and this. But then since that happened to me, like, now everything I read and everything I look at, I always just kind of think, well, mostly stuff that is put on the internet by certain people is just nonsense anyway. But I always read into stuff. Like, I'm not going to... You shouldn't have an opinion on someone because of something that they do or something that they've done that doesn't complete them as a person so i just obviously say that you never know what people are going through in their personal lives or how they're dealing with it you know what i mean so try and keep the comment to yourself and if you haven't got anything good to say probably don't say it yeah i think uh i think we can all take a bit of advice from that to be honest with you so um during obviously that season after your incident and stuff, obviously it was a bit of, a bit of a gap. What were you doing in terms of playing football? Oh well, obviously I was still um, I was still at Coventry. Well, obviously I was still um, contracted at Coventry, but obviously things obviously occurred there and and went on, which I won't hundred percent speak about. But I just I ended up going on a few like kind of trials to go places, and I'll be honest, what I'd done in the summer messed me up. Like it messed everything up because the media coverage, what I got from it, and how everybody knew, no one really wanted to touch me. Like I just yeah. come on the back of playing like 20, 20 games for Hereford in the Conference North, and to be honest, I've done quite well there. Got in a few team of the weeks and stuff, and I felt really comfortable at that level. To be fair, at nineteen years of age, so my plan would have been to kick on, you know what I mean? So either to go back to Coven and try and push into the first team there or to obviously go on loan to a to a National League or a League Two club, you know what I mean? Just to keep keep uh, keep putting building blocks in place because that's kind of how my career went. Because like, I went I, on loan at 18 and as soon as I went on loan, to be fair, and, and played first team football, I never wanted to play 23s football again. Like As soon as I played first team and I got up for it on a Saturday, three o'clock, everyone's putting their body on the line for the three points and, and you know what I mean, in a team and I just never really wanted to play 23s again. So my plan would have been to go out on loan or to obviously play in Cobb's first teams. But because of what happened, no one like in League 2 or National League really wanted to touch me, which I can't blame them, to be honest, because it was obviously, everyone had a, same as in football as not in football. Everyone has an opinion at the end of the day, and without knowing you, you know what I mean. It's not. It's not a. It's not all um roses, but so no one really wanted to touch me. I went on trial a few places. That ended up not happening because the chairman or etc. didn't want to want to touch me. So then. It got to like a week before the season was going to start and I obviously wasn't playing anywhere. Well, I was still training at Cov and stuff, but I needed to play. Like, I was, what was I then? I was 20, I was 20, yeah. So I was like, I need to play. And there was a, there was a PFI guy who, uh, who used to come into Cov and stuff and he, like, recently took, like, the Redditch United job in step three of non-league, which is, is a good level still. Um... And he was like, ah, oh, but I'd already like played in it quite a bit, if you know what I mean. And obviously, like I said, I was trying to do the building blocks and stuff. And if you'd have asked me if I'd have gone, wanted to go back to that level when I was at Hereford, 
I'd have been like, there's no way like, I'd, I'd, I'd want to go back to that level and play at that level, which is no disrespect to the level, but that's just where I was at. And that was probably because I was young and a bit, and a bit, maybe a bit arrogant, if you know what I'm trying to say. Um, but I ended up going there. But why I went there, I was like, I need to play football, but I was still like mentally just drained, if you know what I mean. So I was there for like three, four months. And to be fair, that people people that would have been watching me might have thought like, oh yeah, like this guy is like, a, he's a decent footballer. Like he looks good, like he's tidy and stuff. And he, he like stuff he does, like people at this level can't really do in that. But if I'm honest, like the football that I played there was rubbish. Like I'm, I've got, I know I've got ability. Like I believe in my ability hundred percent, and I know what I can do. And what I was doing there, like, cause I was, bro, I was going to games and generally, not even what caring. Like I didn't want to be there. I just wanted to just sit in my room, bro, and just not do anything. That's all I wanted to do, and I just had the mask on, bro. Like I was going there and and laughing and acting like everything was okay, and I was happy to be playing it, like happy to be there and stuff and it was the furthest thing from the truth like I don't I didn't want to be there I don't want to play at that level but like I said that was the arrogance in me still and that took a little bit longer to get out of me if you know what I mean like a few more months um so they ended up staying there and it got to a point like in like October where you could probably say time was kind of a healer for me where like I, I kind of had to, it was like towards the end of October, November, I remember thinking about it the other day and it was like, I kind of sat myself down and looked at myself in the mirror and said like, okay, like that's happened. You've had your time. Like I was feeling a bit better day in, day out and that towards that time. And I was like, okay, like what do you want to do now? Like what do you want to be? And it was, they're probably the toughest conversation I've ever had because it was like there's possibilities, but there was so like the odds was not stacked in my favour, bro, to be able to 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 go and and get back to a certain level. So I had to sit myself down and say, like, do you want to let this mistake define you? And do you want to ten years? Do you want to tell your kids or do you want to tell people? Like, oh yeah, no, it was like a I, like, I did make it professional and stuff like that at like 18, 19, 20. And then, you know, I messed up. So I'd have made it else or I'd have, I'd, have, I'd have played like this amount of games. Or do you actually want to like suck it up? And do you want to do what you, what you say, basically? So do you want to do you want to go out there and work for it? And I just said, yeah. So I needed to make some massive changes in my life. And I did. And one of them was like, no offense to Redditch or nothing. Like there's loads of nice people there and that like, it's a nice football club, but I had to like get myself away from that environment just because when I was going through so much stuff, I was there. So it was like that place kind of became a bit like toxic to me as well, if you know what I'm trying to say. And we didn't have a great, great team. There's a lot of young lads there and stuff coming out of academies, like younger than me. I was probably one of the oldest lads there, which is mad to say. Um, but yeah, I was just like, I need a change. Um, so I ended up going to um, Bromsgrove Sporting, which is like another local club in Birmingham who are in the same league, but I'd say they're more like, they had more funds, they had better players and they were pushing a little bit more. And that was kind of the point where I said, okay, from here now, did this day onwards, this is where it starts. And like, I just made that promise to myself and it all just kind of escalated from there, bro. Like I, I went in there, trained on the Thursday, played on a Saturday, got man of the match, actually like played a little bit like I could, if you know what I'm trying to say. Like to them, I, I probably look really good, but like for me and my standards, which I've always had high standards and I still set that on myself now, I was all right, if you know what I mean. Then I just kind of kept kept getting better. And as well as that, the lads there was what I needed. They were they were class. Like I still speak to a lot of them now. They're class lads. So they took me in and never judged me, which was good. And they just took me for who I was, like any other guy. And like we had a great relationship. Like the team there was great. 
and I just kicked on where so it got to like end of December and I was I was generally feeling a bit more like myself off the pitch and feeling a bit more like myself on the pitch if you know what I mean um and then I say we went into January and I just I just carried on kicking on really bro like I was I said one thing about that kind of level and younger lads like myself then at the time you have to do more than than what's asked if you know what I'm trying to say then it says on the tin so if a club's saying to you go training Tuesday night go training Thursday night play a game on a Saturday or whatever then if you do want to be take take it seriously then you have to be training by yourself Monday training by yourself Wednesday training by yourself Friday going to the gym in between stuff as well so you need to act like a professional footballer but not actually be one at the time if you want to get there you know what I mean which I didn't do, bro, like, the first four or five months because I just couldn't. Like, mentally, I couldn't do it, bro. Like, i just not feeling right. So, when I went there, I was just generally playing with... The arrogance was just kind of knocked out of me because I, I told you I had that convo and I was just like, this is you now. Like, this is where you're at. Like, you need to, you, you need to realise that. So, I stopped playing with that R. Oh, I shouldn't be here, like I'm too good for this. And I am started playing with that. I am here. Now let's show that I'm too good for this, if you know what I mean. So by like January came, I was going onto the pitch just knowing that I was going to be the best player on the pitch, but not in an arrogant way, if you know what I'm trying to say. So I just had that, oh, I was getting that belief back in me, like, I think I'm too good for this level, but I wasn't thinking like that. It was just like, I know I'm going to be the best player on the pitch. So go and show it. And obviously, as every like player knows, you get more confident with games and stuff and good games and and this and that. So I was just flying there really. And um and then it got to like February and I ruptured my quad in a game. Well, to be fair, it's a mad one. Um I actually ruptured my quad like four games before that, but I didn't know. So Basically, in like, I think it was like the last like week in December or like the one before that, I just felt like my quad a little bit in a game, like in the first half, and then I just carried on and that. And uh, I just thought, oh, like I've kind of like just strained it a little, but I was just that focused on just playing games all the time and, and I didn't want to miss anything because it was going well and I was enjoying it again and kind of got that love back for football, which during the four or five months I had prior to the incident, I lost it. Like, I didn't have the enthusiasm that I'd always had because I've always loved football and I've always wanted to do it. But at that time, I I couldn't think of anywhere be- like worse to be, if you know what I mean. Like, I just wanted to be in my room, like I said. So, yeah, I played like, I remember playing like New Year's Day, the, the week after, the week after that with a port, with like a, a ruptured quad but like I just thought oh, it's, it's, it'll be all right like I'll ice it and this and that then obviously I kind of remember playing a game and I just had to come off after 20 minutes because it was just just killing me then I ended up getting a scan and I was out for eight weeks which kind of was like I would, was a kick in the teeth because I was just like that I was looking so good people was talking about me positively again I was feeling good in myself and stuff like that then I had that to deal with all over again which was not probably needed so I went through all of that cracked on and stuff and got got myself back and then yeah then came uh I was about to play my first game on a Saturday and uh the lockdown came <laughs> so I was just like I was just, just there. Can't, just, just can't not get a break. Yeah, man. I was just scratching my eyeballs out, bro, thinking, oh, my God, surely not, man. Surely not. Like, I've just done all the eight weeks of pre-hab to get back. And I was just like, oh, my God. I was just like, look. I was like, look. But, yeah, that kind of affected me a little because I was just like, this could kill me. Like, Because I knew if I carried on, carried on progressing and carried on playing the way I was, and 
I wouldn't say like, because I never had no issue with like my behaviour or anything like that all throughout my football career, bro. Because I just love playing football. But that was obviously the incident. I was just like, well, if you just keep keep doing this, keep doing that, and and it's not hard for me, bro, to kind of like everyone. But well, people always ask you about now, like, oh yeah, he could be a good player and that. He's a good player and that. But like, what's he like as a person? But everyone always says that, like, oh, he's he's cool, like he's a nice kid and that. But it's hard for people to believe. But for me, it was never hard because I don't have to put on an act. It's just natural to me, if you know what I mean. So everyone's like, oh, is he a nice kid and that? But I never had to like had to change, if you know what I mean. So like, for people to like me, like me or accept me in that kind of way, which it kind of got to that because everyone was just thinking about that one thing, which is was rubbish at the time. So yeah, the lockdown, lockdown came, and obviously I'd done what I'd done in that season, and kind of got myself going again. Um, but it was obviously a kick in the teeth because I had no football for the rest of the season. Realistically, that like I had nothing. So I was like, in. In June, July, like I was questioning whether anything was obviously was thinking positive about it, and thought like something, someone will will surely just realise that it was a one-off and and stuff like that, and and now they'll take me because my ability is obviously is obviously good, and it was hard through lockdown because. I kind of had, a, had to have another conversation with myself, to be honest, and said, like, are you are you going to let all of this work that you've done in the past four months, after coming out of such a dark place, are you going to let this all just just go, like, just go, basically? So is, this, is that going to be for nothing? And then through lockdown, to be honest, bro, I kind of... I didn't think it was a good thing at the time, but it was because... What I would say, and what obviously footballers will know, is that the like prehab work and the stretching and the the leg strengthening and all that other stuff, like, it's so important. Like, you don't probably appreciate it enough when you're younger, but as you get a little bit older, you do. And I appreciated it that year because I wasn't doing none of that, and I wasn't doing gym, I wasn't really doing any stretching and stuff like that. Because when I was obviously going through the tough period. I'd, was thinking like I, I can't do that mentally like I can't just go and do gym I just weren't feeling I couldn't do it and then when I was obviously like I said went to Bromsgrove and stuff it was just solely focused on football like I want to play football I want to do this but I just neglected my body so all the strengthening work all this which is obviously there to prevent like muscle injuries and stuff like that I just didn't do so I was just playing games and not stretch after training, this and that wouldn't warm up correctly and stuff like that. And it took its toll on my body. So I used the whole of literally the whole four or five months of lockdown, as well as like staying fit and doing loads of running sessions and foot and football drills and stuff like that. I used it as like I need to strengthen my body. So in I was just preparing basically for the opportunity, which is was so hard because I was preparing for something that actually could never come. So, like, getting myself to do it every single day of the week and eat right and and look after my body was so... It got tough after a while because it was like, am I actually doing this for no, for no purpose, if you know what I mean? So I just had to keep kind of looking at the end goal. So then, yeah, I just carried on doing that and, and stayed, like so like strict of it and finally got my body like strong again and and flexible again and like my my legs and and my body was like it, they were when I was involved in professional football every day if you know what I mean so I just prepared for it and then obviously I ended up um getting an opportunity at the end of it which is which is good yeah, I mean, as you said, you know, it must be just so hard to work towards the goal that you're not really sure if it's going to come or not. Yeah, that's But, you know, thing. but it did come. And moving on to the club that did give you the opportunity, but an opportunity that you wanted, sorry, um, Bolton Wanderers. 
what's it like then to play for such a big club? Yeah, bro, it is really good, man. Obviously, when I, I got the phone call and stuff to come in and train and stuff, I was like, like obviously knew the club had been in the Premier League, etc. And it was a massive club, like the stadium is obviously like top stuff. Like it's a champ prem stadium at the end of the day. So I just said to myself when I got the phone call, because it was really early on, like these, um, we started back here like earlier than other clubs, if you know what I'm trying to say. So when I got this phone call, it was to come in like the first day of pre-season. And obviously I'd prepared for it really well. And I was, I was in good shape and stuff. So I was like, okay, that I'm just going to make sure that, that I don't let, like they can't say no, if you know what I mean. I'm going to do everything I can when I go in to earn something because the club obviously speaks for itself in the size and stuff. The engagement from fans in terms of like the tweets that Bolton's Twitter account sends, even to yourself, you know, just general tweets. You, you see floods of Bolton fans just saying that they believe in you. And, you know, obviously we all know what happened at Coventry. That's, of course, why the, the fans have the sour taste, understandably. But for them to go from that to then feeling the love essentially how did that feel it was really good to be fair like the the fans are have been class with me and I, that can only go out to them like they've been they've been top joy with me and i have nothing but um respect and love for them to be fair uh they've been class with me like on social media it's obviously been a shame that they haven't um been able to to come into the stadium obviously a massive shame for them and it is like a shame for the players as well because i'd have loved to have I've been playing in front of how like fifteen thousand fans every week. Like there's nothing. I don't think there's nothing better than that really as a footballer, especially if, um, from where I've come from, and just the engagement as well with them. To be fair, because as much as like they might they might think I'm a good player, they might not. But like I would have liked to have shown them like my my personality and stuff like that. You know what I mean? And they don't really get to to kind of see that fun side or that jokey side to me and and the different things like that. So that is obviously a shame, but like on social media and stuff, they're obviously very vocal um, in what they say and, and, and rightly so. Like it's a massive club and and they deserve, they deserve to have their say, if you know what I mean. So yeah, it's, it's good, man. For the team, for the club, Bolton as a collective, what are the goals and aims? Um, well, obviously... The club wants to get promoted. At the end of the day, it, it's too big of a club to, to stay in League Two. It needs to keep pushing on now. And I think, obviously, they've come down to League Two. I don't obviously know what happened in previous years and stuff, but this, I think this is like their lowest uh, division, like lowest ranking or something like that. So, at the end of the day, the club can only go up. So... It's up to the people that are involved here to, to make that happen because they deserve it because they've been through tough times as well. So I can obviously, we have like a, a middle ground between us, if you know what I mean, which might help, to be fair, just because we have like similarities of what we've been through. Because at the end of the day, football fans are passionate and it's their life. Like As much as football is my life, football is their life as well. And this is their club. They've been here a lot longer than me, and they'll be long. They'll be here longer than any of the players, if you know what I'm trying to say. So, I just hope for their sake that the club can push on and stuff. And obviously, I, I would would love to push on with the club as well. You're a key example, I believe, that there is hope beyond being released, no matter what the situation, no matter how unique it can be. So, if you could give a few words of advice to any player who has been released or is going through this type of process, what would it be? I'd say to like myself and any other like younger lad out there that is trying to pursue the same thing that I am, um, ultimately you have to believe in yourself because you're the, the one that's going to be there throughout your whole journey. There's going to be people that are believing you in the world. There's going to be people that don't believe in you, but you ultimately have to believe in yourself, which I always have apart from that four months. And I'll also say that Football is not easy. <laughs> like, even getting to this point where I am, and I've done nothing in the game. I've done absolutely nothing in the game. I've got a long way still to go. Um, but it's not easy. So, 
you're gonna you're gonna take setbacks, you're gonna take knockbacks, you're gonna have times where you feel like it's never gonna work. But if you wanna be a footballer, you have to get past it. And if you it's never the end, I'll say that basically. Cause there'll be a lot of kids that will get released from professional clubs and stuff at 20, 19 or something, 21. And I just think, ah, oh, nah, this ain't, nah, like, this ain't going to be for me. Like, I can't do this anymore. Like, they don't want me, so boom. Then you'll go for another bad time or you won't be playing or something. And then you just be like, nah, I might as well just, just, just knock it on the head. And that. I promise you, if you keep working hard, you'll get, you'll get to where you want to go because the problem is nowadays people think that they can just work hard for a little bit so you think oh like let me just focus and this and that and then three four weeks you're thinking oh I ain't, what's going on like I, 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 ain't, I ain't got no rewards or nothing it's not going to be like that you know what I mean life isn't as simple as that I used to think like that when I used to be a young lad at Cov to be fair it's the focus, like, properly hard and that for four weeks. I'll do well and that. And then I'll train with the first team, this and that. Then I think, I ain't even got what I want to get. So forget this. Like, I'll just sack, up, sack it off for a couple of weeks and, and just turn up to training and not do this and that. But I promise you, if you keep focused and you, you do the same things day in, day out and that for... It's going to... If you keep doing it, it will happen. It will happen. It's just how long will it take? You know what I mean? Like, it took yeah. me, well, I say it probably took me, like, seven months, probably even longer than that, to kind of get any happiness again from football. Because when I was playing for Bromsgrove and thinking, and I was enjoying it, yeah, I was loving it at the time, but was I really happy? Like, f f with my ability, and I should never have been been there you know what I mean like if you'd have asked about me three years before that everyone had been like well he'd have probably been playing in in the first team or he'd be probably doing this you know what I mean so I always just say that like your journey is going to be long it's going to be tough and that but just don't give up like if you really want it you'll you'll get it brilliant yeah definitely well I must say huge thank you for opening up about your experiences and I'm not 100% sure but from what I know this is the first time you've publicly spoken about certain things and yeah. for you to for you to do an interview of this which I'm sure you probably had a few chances to do so in the past but for you to <laughs> yeah. choose to for you to choose to speak about it in a podcast which is designed to raise awareness and you know how potentially the hundreds or even thousands of players that go through something similar um, I believe that truly says a lot about you instead of you know past mistakes yeah and, yeah and through your determination, you were rewarded with the opportunity to play for such a big club like Bolton. And I genuinely wish you the best of luck in the rest of your career, Jack. I appreciate that, bro. And yeah, like you said, man, the reason why I've done this podcast with you and I've, I have had, obviously, a lot of people try and ask me to do podcasts or to speak to them and this and that, like in the past year or something. Because today like what we're doing is it for the right reasons like this ain't really about me like everything that I've said today is not for me it's for people listening and for kids that have, got, have gone through similar things or even like older older generation that are struggling with different things just to show them that like you can go, be at your lowest point in life and you can and you can turn it around like there is there is always a light at the end of the tunnel if you're willing to put the hard work in and yeah, like you said, the reason that I did come on this and not go with other people because I didn't want it all to just be about that situation because they would have obviously tried to twist twist things and and to try and make me out to be something I'm not at the end of the day is what was which everyone loves hearing. You know what I mean? Everyone loves hearing hearing negative stuff, bro. Like that's what the media is and 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 online kind of is. So yeah, I, like, I appreciate um you for letting me come on and kind of tell my story so hopefully this will um, benefit people in um in time and people will listen to this and maybe and I don't know possibilities could come from it which is obviously the aim of it and to raise awareness for people that are struggling at this moment in time which everyone goes through so yeah pleasure bro
That's good stuff. Jack, thanks again, mate. And thank you to everyone who has watched. I sincerely hope you've enjoyed this two-part series release, Where Do I Go From Here? And I hope it's shed light and raised awareness on the difficulties of being released from a professional team. Don't forget to keep up to date with this podcast on Instagram for more content by the content. Stay safe, everyone, and bye for now. Let's go.